Okay, so I'll be talking about how and why I made this map oh, of the Appalachian Trail, an absurdly long uh, journal atop hiking reference. <clears throat> so here we go. So here it is, uh, created kind of to mimic the Field Notes aesthetic. Anybody here know about Field Notes brand? Hold it up if you've got one. All right, yeah, I see some beautiful stuff. Um, anyone here actually through hike the AT before? Anybody piecemealing it? Anybody with the goal of through hiking the Appalachian Trail? Has anyone like me bisected the Appalachian Trail? <laughs> I've done that, it was easy. The Appalachian Trail is easy. Uh, so here we go. Um, pay no attention to that formatting. Uh, long maps, there's nothing new about them. Hiking references, travel references typically is the thing. Just because you've got a long path and you aren't concerned about the undulations, it's just about the journey and the waypoints along the way. And a lot of uh, medieval reference maps came in this fashion. Here's an example of Matthew Paris's reference for pilgrims journeying from London to Palestine. Dig those little insert flaps that he put in there, right? I love that. Rectangles don't tell Matthew how to make a map. It's great. Also, trip ticks. I mean, I would use these in college for road trips. You go to the AAA and say, I'm going from here to here, and they crank them out for you and hand it to you. Everything's highlighted and everything is beautiful. Uh, just a handy reference. And I have this, which uh, was an inspiration to me. Um, bought at a, a gift shop at the Smoky, Mar Smoky Mountain National Park, but we got this of the Appalachian Trail, and it hangs um, on my bookshelf in my home, and it, it uh, starts at, you know, near the ceiling and goes all the way down to where my toddlers can scribble upon it, making their own important annotations of the Appalachian Trail. So speaking of children, I grew up watching Roy Underhill and the Woodwright Shop, right? Uh, not necessarily learning about wood writing and... and, and and wood itself, but work, craftsmanship and, and uh, working with your material and being thoughtful about the process and why you're doing what you're doing. It's amazing. And I'm still a fan of this right, show. Anybody here watched The Woodwright Shop? Oh my goodness, what, a, what, a, what an inspiration. So finally I, I worked up the courage to send an email to Roy. I was like, you know what, I should just tell Roy how I feel. And so I was like, hey Roy, thank you for what I do. By the way, I'm a cartographer and what you teach has a lot of applications in my domain as well. Uh, and I sent it out there on the forum. And lo and behold, he wrote back. I could not believe it. He's like, wow, that's great. And you know what? There's this beautiful long map that I pass by every day. And I imagine myself going down the Thames, um, the Anglers and Boatsman's Guide to the River. And that, what a moment, right? I immediately forwarded it to my wife, Danielle, and said, Roy wrote me back. That was a great moment. Cartography most excellent? Who else talks like that? So here's the map. I immediately looked it up. I have to admit, I hadn't actually heard of it. And then I, I quickly checked it out. And it's this really beautiful thing in that old kind of uh, cloth binding and this long kind of folded top accordion folded paper map with all these references for uh, things for people along the river to look out for. And it was, it was lovely. And I was like, I'm going to have to make something a lot like this. You know, this is just great, except apparently I'm going to have to do it several years from now because this was a while ago. Uh, and then, uh, a short time ago, a colleague of mine, Eric Rainville, gave me this field notes, and it was a real honor. I was very blessed to receive it, just because they're so prized and beautiful, and I just love the quality and the texture. Um, and if you're not familiar with field notes, it's, it's this really kind of interesting aesthetic brand. And I also happened to be watching recently Skillshare videos, um, which is a great way to watch things, or just YouTube in general. And I was taking uh, some class from Aaron Draplin, and I was like, oh, he is the field notes dude. I didn't realize that until a, a couple of videos e in, even though he's pretty ham-handed about saying he's a, the field notes dude. Uh, and it, it, it's a lot of fun, and I was like, what a wonderful thing. And I'm looking at their website, I'm like, look at this. Um, and they even have a left-handed one, which is really just the, f the thing inverted. I was like, these people get it. Okay, so I found inspiration for the aesthetic that I wanted to use for my long-form map. Um, then I just had to find a topic, right? Um, and so I, I asked Eric, I was like, Eric, did you know that uh, Draplin was the Field Notes guy? He's like, do I know, right? He's a huge fan, so here's Eric next. Eric occasionally wears kilts whenever he goes to conferences, so if you ever see somebody in a kilt who looks like this, that's Eric. And there he is with, 
And uh, he said, I, I said, Eric, should we collaborate on this? And he said, absolutely, let's do this. Uh, and we rolled up our sleeves, and he sent me this reference about a journal atop uh, that uh, Colby Kirk, has anyone ever heard this? So there's just this art form of journaling in your, in your, uh, in your notebooks. These happen to be moleskin, and moleskin was really the kind of size that I was shooting for as far as like a bound volume. Uh, and it's its, it's its own art form. And last year, there, uh, Daniel Huffman was heard to say, and I quote, color is overrated. And I thought this would be kind of a neat opportunity, right? In that field note aesthetic, to have like a one color print run of this. Uh, what's my color gonna be? I like this old kind of uh, whimsical, uh, don't, do, don't engage in these ways of death, really, is, is this, is this uh, who, who would actually publish a safety manual for a tractor anymore in cartoons of gr grisly ways to damage yourself with a tractor? I love it. And I, I really liked the color, too. And so I arrived on this color. And um, I searched Google for some textures, you know, paper texture, craft card texture. And I'm, I'm looking around for like a half hour for like copyright free things that I can use. And I'm like, what am I doing? And so I just went in the house and I, I took a picture of the back of a legal pad. Right? Uh, and I took a picture of a piece of drawing paper, and then I took a photo of an envelope to use as the belly band that wraps these, these little volumes. And I just stuck them all together and, and spent some time indulging in Photoshop, recreating a fake cut. And uh, most people navigate from south to north if they do a through hike, which is interesting. Craig William told me, Williams told me that. So here we go. Uh, this was, frankly, I'm going to say the most fun aspect of this. Once this was out of the way, I was like, okay, fine. I suppose I should actually make a map at this point. So in my last three minutes, let's talk about the cartography at this cartography conference. So I used uh, an equidistant projection, which is important to me, of course. And I uh, altered the projection so that my center point would be off in the Pacific, thereby rotating this conic projection into something reasonably straight that would fit on a long piece of paper. And I started with state boundaries, and because I'm going monochrome, you know, I have to have uh, some way of differentiating between the landform and the trail itself, and so I made it a faded and dashed border for the states. Um, and I was thinking initially of contour lines, but the, the map became so busy, um, I said, well, let's just try some hill shade, and then I pushed it way back. And it was just nice con context, you know, if you're hiking, you want to know the local topography, not necessarily the lines. And, explicit elevations. And for reference, you know, if I'm hiking this, what do I want to see? Well, maybe it's interesting to see state parks and national parks and national forests. So I added those in there with a faded uh, buffer fill. And then lastly, the, the path itself is uh, the only basic solid line on here with, with uh, places to stop along the way as circles and named. Um, the scale part was pretty interesting, right? Because Field Notes has this kind of grid uh, array that you can work atop. And so I included that in my map, and I, and I hate scale bars, frankly. I'm just going to say it. I don't like scale bars, and I almost never use them. Uh, but I thought, I can cheat and use this as a scale, and every line is five miles from itself. And I converted them to dots as a dot reference, uh, which gave me the opportunity to write some cheeky legend in there about Pythagoras and five by files, five, and maybe it's seven miles, etc. cetera. Uh, and I made an over overview map for every page in the foldout, uh, which gave me an opportunity to, to dr drop the only kind of in-context overview map on the back fake cover. Uh, and then lastly, the north arrow, right? I, I just made a north arrow in the Futura font and gave it a little grain texture and added it in DarkJS Pro, which was happy to rotate it geographically to truth. And I dropped it at the beginning and the end of, uh, of my map. And then uh, it kind of looks like a pack of three that you might buy from Field Notes, right? Uh, and there it is. So completely fake, all digital, until uh, I actually saw a printed copy of it uh, yesterday that Daniel had printed out, which is kind of neat to actually see it in, in real life. Uh, and there it is. So thank you very much.